Bile is required for a, a wide variety of bodily functions, and most people don't understand how problematic it can be when bile becomes too thick and sticky to flow properly. So in this video, we're going to talk about 10 reasons that bile flow is crucial for good health. You're not going to believe all the trouble this can cause. Let's get at it. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Poor bile flow is extremely common. And as a matter of fact, if you're dealing with issues right now that you think are caused by poor bile flow, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below this video. Let us know what's going on. And to learn how easy it is to cause trouble with, with bile flow, check the description below for our video for five mistakes that are restricting bile flow. Now, we got a lot to cover here, so let's jump right into these 10 reasons why bile flow is crucial for health. And number one is weight control. Yeah, poor bile flow can cause weight gain in a wide variety of reasons. And as we go through these other nine reasons, I'm going to come back and show you why so many of these other problems can lead back to weight gain. So making sure bile is flowing is crucial anytime somebody has a goal of, of trying to lose weight. The second reason is to regulate our stool. So when we eat food, our stomach makes hydrochloric acid to acidify that food and start the breakdown process. And once the food is acidified properly, it leaves the stomach and goes into the duodenum, which is the first 10 inches of the small intestine. So this bile stuff is made by the liver and then it's stored in the gallbladder where it's concentrated so it can be more effective. And this bile is very alkaline. So when the acid product leaves the stomach, that's when the gallbladder squirts this bile down onto the acid product to neutralize those acids. Now, if those acids aren't neutralized, they continue down through the small intestine and through the intestinal tract. And the problem is the stomach was made to hold those acids, but the small intestine is not. So those acids will actually start breaking down the intestinal lining and could digest a hole right through your gut. So the body doesn't want that to happen. And it'll bring all this water here to cool it down and then rush it through the system. So that can create a chronic diarrhea problem. So bile is very important to neutralize those acids so our food and our stool is not screaming through the system. Now bile is also a soapy substance that can be like a lubricant that can help the stool move a little bit easier. So bile can be crucial to slow the stool down, but it can also be important to help it keep moving. Now, if you're dealing with chronic constipation, it can be a lot more than just making sure that you have bile flow. So check the description below for our video on understanding constipation so you can look at all the other factors that can be involved there. The third reason is digestive function. Like we just talked about, when the acidic food leaves the stomach, the gallbladder squirts this bile down in here to neutralize those acids. But the other thing that happens when this overly alkaline substance meets an overly acidic product is that it creates a sizzle. And this sizzle is what we're living on. This sizzle is what helps us bust that food apart and pull all the nutrients out of that food. That's what helps us access the vitamins and the minerals and the amino acids and everything that we're trying to get out of that food to help our body function correctly. So without this sizzle, we create nutrient deficiencies and a wide variety of other problems. If you can't access the, the nutrients and the minerals in the food you're eating, that's going to lead to cravings. Cravings come from the body saying, hey, I'm not getting all the stuff that I need. Give me, give me something else. So you really need to be able to give the body what it needs to keep it from screaming from these easy to process and break down junk and carbs and sugars that are going to spike insulin and lead back to that weight gain that we were talking about. So that's a big deal with weight gain is you need to be able to control your cravings or how are you going to stick to any type of healthy eating. So we want to make sure that the body can actually break down the food that you're eating, access the nutrients that it's looking for so it doesn't continue to scream for a bunch of junk. Number four is gallbladder function. That bile is stored in the gallbladder so it can be concentrated, so it's more effective when it's time to be used. But when the bile becomes too thick and sticky to flow through the gallbladder correctly, 
it will stay in there and continue to concentrate until it concentrates into stones. And now we have gallstones, and now the bile can't get past the gallstone, and we get a gallstone blockage in the biliary pathway, and we have a gallbladder attack, and then there's somebody yanks out our gallbladder. So if you've never had a gallbladder attack, I'll let you know you really don't want one. You want your gallbladder working correctly so that you can continue to have digestion functioning correctly. So the biggest deal to make the gallbladder work is to make sure bile is thin enough to flow correctly. This is a really big deal. Number five is fat emulsification. When we consume dietary fats, those fats have to be emulsified or, or broken down. And bile is like a soapy substance that helps us emulsify those fats. So when these fats are not properly emulsified and, and broken down, they can rot and ferment and become toxic. And then instead of nourishing the body and giving the body tools that it needs, it gives the body a burden. And now the body has to figure out, well, what do I do with these undigested fats? These fats can be stored in fat cells and expand our fat. And here we go back to the weight gain issue again. These fats can be pushed out through the pores in the skin and create acne and other skin issues. So we really want these dietary fats to be broken down so that the body can use them. The body needs dietary fats. And when it's not getting dietary fats, it'll scream for other fuel sources like carbs and sugars and processed junk that's a lot easier to break down when both sides of digestion are not working correctly. If you can't acidify your food correctly and you don't have enough bile flowing down to neutralize those acids and create that sizzle, the body will start screaming for this junk that's kind of broken down before you even eat it, really. So a lot of these increase in cravings from this junk food come from an inability to emulsify our fats and give the body what it needs. So again, right back to the weight gain issue. Number six is access to fat-soluble vitamins. You don't just need to consume dietary fat to be able to access fat-soluble vitamins that you, your body needs to do things like, you know, rebuild tissues and stuff like that. They're kind of important. But it's more important than just consuming the fats. You have to be able to emulsify and break them down so that the body can use them. So bile flow is crucial so that you can also access those fat-soluble vitamins that can be so important. Number seven is electrolyte balance. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that low blood pressure can create just as many health problems and concerns as high blood pressure can. Low blood pressure can create issues like anxiety and depression and insomnia and vertigo and all kinds of other issues. So when we see a low blood pressure issue, it's often due to either or both sides of digestion not working well enough to pull the minerals out of the food. When there's not enough minerals in the system, our blood pressure can go very low. So we need to be able to create that sizzle from the alkaline bile meeting the acid product leaving the stomach so that we can access all the minerals in that food. Now, high blood pressure can be caused by a lack of bile flow for a totally different reason. In the majority of high blood pressure cases that we see, poor bile flow is at least a contributing factor, if not the main factor. Now, there are other causes of high blood pressure, but in most cases, poor bile flow is a really huge contributing factor. Now, you're going to understand why that is when we talk about number eight, which is detoxification pathways. So we know that the liver produces this bile, and what a lot of people don't know is that when the liver filters junk and toxins and filth out of the body, because that's the liver's job, it puts that filth into the bile. And then the bile goes down to the intestinal tract, and as it moves through the intestinal tract, that filth can be taken out the back door in our stool. That's the body's main exit strategy for filth and toxins. So if the liver is filtering out all this junk and putting it in the bile, but the bile has become too thick and sticky to flow correctly, well, the trash doesn't get taken out. What happens in your house if your trash doesn't get taken out? It all accumulates and you got a trashy house. Well, you got a trashy body when the bile isn't flowing well enough to allow those toxins to be removed. So when the bile isn't flowing, the filth and toxins that the liver filtered out they get reassimilated into the body and the liver's got to filter it all out again. It's like, hey, I just did this. Why are you giving me this again? And eventually the liver will get overwhelmed and it can't keep up with all the toxins. So as these toxins accumulate in the bloodstream, the filth and toxins thicken up the blood and now this thick blood creates more pressure to push the thick blood through the system and our blood pressure goes up. So when someone with high blood pressure improves their bile flow, 
it can really bring down blood pressure in a big hurry because now the body has an exit strategy for all these filth and toxins. But all these detoxes and cleanses are so popular right now. Like all the cool kids have some detox that they want you to do. And hey, for 10 days, we're just going to eat crayon wrappers or just drink this gallon of motor oil to cleanse out your system and the reality is what if we just allowed the body to detox the way that it's supposed to what if we just help the body function the way that it wants to function get that detox pathway working and then you don't have to eat crayola wrappers and, and motor oil for lunch now the big problem with an inability to detox is that the liver has other jobs it has to do so if it's overwhelmed because its detoxification pathway isn't working and it's filtering out the same junk over and over again then it can't do the other jobs it's supposed to do as well, which brings us to number nine, which is cholesterol production. The liver is in charge of most of our cholesterol. Very little of our cholesterol comes from dietary cholesterol. Like 85% of our cholesterol is made by our liver. And the problem is that the body uses cholesterol to deal with inflammation. Cholesterol is not this evil thing like we've been told. If you don't understand that yet, check the description below for our video on cholesterol and saturated fat so you can understand what's really going on here. But cholesterol is used to deal with inflammation and when the liver is so overwhelmed that it can't make enough cholesterol, then the inflammation goes up. A lot of people deal with chronic pain, just don't have the ability to make enough cholesterol to deal with that inflammation. And that brings us to number 10, which is another problem with the liver. Liver is in charge of converting T3 to the active T4 so that our thyroid can function. So if the liver is too overwhelmed to do that, then we don't get that conversion, and that means that our thyroid isn't going to work. And everybody's upset about how my thyroid is not working, but they don't look to see how their liver is functioning. Does the liver have the ability to even make that conversion? And now my metabolism's out of whack and my pants don't fit. So here we go back to weight gain again. So you can see we went through 10 different issues that can really go wrong when bile is not flowing correctly. And more than half of them led back to the ability to a person to gain weight. So we can see that improving bile flow not only can help all these health issues, it can also make weight loss a whole lot easier. To help you figure out if your bile flow has a problem or not, we have a totally free digestion course, and we'll put the link to that free course in the description below. And the free course will help you walk through these simple tests that you can do at home using tools that you can pick up at like a pharmacy or a health food store. And those tests will help you figure out, is bile flow an issue? Are there other aspects of digestion that may not be working correctly? And the steps that you can take to improve those. So for now, also watch our video on five steps to improve bile flow so that you can get more insights into steps that you can do right now to make sure bile is moving. I can't wait to hear about your results.